Hello everyone, let's practice a few questions and try to know the application part of what we have learned in our last two videos. Before starting with the first question, I would suggest you all to pause the video and try answering the question all by yourself first. Now let's begin with the first question. Visceral efferent column arises from which part of the neural tube? As we have already uh, learned in the first video that the brain stem in our embryonic life is uh, developing from the two plates which are separated by the sulcus limitans in between. So the plate which lies anterior to the portion uh, or the plate which lies anterior to the sulcus limitans is the motor plate and which makes the efferent portion as we know motor is also efferent so which makes the efferent portion and it develops from the basal plate. So the, uh, we are left with the posterior part and the posterior part develops from the LR plate which makes the sensory portion which is afferent and we had a mnemonic here and that was A is not for anterior that was A is not for A that is LR is not placed anteriorly so it is the basal plate which is placed anteriorly and is motor in nature. So as the question says visceral efferent column and as we know efferent is nothing but the motor column so the motor plates are located anteriorly so it will be the basal plate. So the answer here will be basal plate. Now the next question that is general visceral efferent do not supply which of the following and the options are glands, smooth muscle, skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle. Here you can do one thing, you can rule out very easily that uh, I we had a concept that which is in our control and which is not in our control that is which is involuntary. So here you can see very well that only one involuntary thing, uh, only one voluntary uh, thing is present here that is skeletal muscle, rest all are involuntary. So even if you don't know that general visceral efferent supplies the involuntary part then also you can rule out very easily that they are asking the true answer that means we have to rule out odd one out that is the voluntary part that is the skeletal muscle but still we will go uh, to the details of it that is uh, as we know general visceral efferent is the ANS portion of the uh, cranial system and as we know in the ANS we have two portions that is the sympathetic part and the parasympathetic part and we discussed it that sympathetic arises from thoracolumbar outflow and the parasympathetic has the craniosacral outflow the word cranio is coming in the parasympathetic and as we are reading about the cranial portion that is the cranial nerves so it is only the parasympathetic system which we will be discussing here and as we know from the uh, from our pharmacology knowledge that the parasympathetic supplies to the uh, visceras of the body and the glands of the body for the secretion portion so uh, it controls our secretions and the peristalsis and the contractions of the smooth muscles so it will be the glands the smooth muscles and the cardiac muscles these are controlled by the parasympathetic system so these will be supplied by the general visceral efferent but the skeletal muscle which is a somatic muscle it is a voluntary muscle and as we have discussed voluntary are somatic in nature so they won't be visceral so they will be general somatic efferent i hope it's clear and we ha also had a mnemonic here that was dilpe kiska zor that means we don't have a control over the heart that is cardiac muscle and we also said that diarrhea and constipation are uh, constipation are not controlled by our will so that means smooth muscles are also not in our control and e even we say mai rona nahi chaah rahi thi but mujhe aansu aa gaye that means the lacrimation portion is also not in our control the salivation is also not in our control that means the glands are also not in our control I hope it's clear. Now let's move to the next question. All except one cranial nerve contain neurons that is from the general somatic efferent column. Now in this question as you can see we are asking about the general somatic efferent and uh, let's see the option first that is nerve supplying superior oblique muscle as we have discussed that superior oblique is an extraocular muscle and as we all very well know that extraocular muscles have the nerve supply with the mnemonic that is LR6, SO4 and all rest all by 3 
that is third nerve so we know extraocular muscles are in our control we move our eyes according to our will so it will be a somatic fibers so yes it is a somatic fiber and it is general because it is not derived from your pharyngeal arches and as we have already discussed pharyngeal arches uh, are the only uh, the muscles derived from the pharyngeal arches are the only ones which are special in nature rest all the muscles are general in nature so superior oblique will be general in nature so general somatic efferent now the next option is nerve supplying the muscles of the tongue and as we have already discussed that tongue is a uh, tongue is developing from the occipital somite which is a part of axial mesoderm which again is a part of intraembryonic mesoderm that shows it is also not a pharyngeal arch derivative so that means it uh, the muscles of the tongue will be supplied by the general fibers and as we know tongue is in our control as uh, whatever we speak it's like according to our will so it will be somatic again and since muscles are being supplied so efferent fibers now the third option is nerve supplying the tensor tympani and as we know that uh, tensor tympani is a muscle of first pharyngeal arch so since it is a muscle of first pharyngeal arch so it will be special to us so this will be the answer here as it is odd one out we will we'll be discussing the fourth option also the fourth option is nerve supplying sternocleidomastoid and as we know sternocleidomastoid is supplied by the uh, your spinal accessory nerve and we can move our head uh, according to our will uh, means the if we want to look right so of course we can move our neck uh, to the right direction according to our will if i say look at your uh, left so you can move your head according to you uh, your own will so it will also be your voluntary muscle so we have our answer that is the nerve supplying tensor tympani as it is a first brinkel arch derivative so it will be special fiber and all the special efferent fibers are visceral in nature so uh, it will be a special visceral efferent not the part of general somatic efferent column now the next question is a special visceral efferent supplies all except now as we know as we have already discussed in the last question special visceral efferent is only the term used for the pharyngeal arch derivatives so now in this question we have to see which is not a part of pharyngeal arch so temporalis as you know it is a muscle of mastication so it forms the uh, it is a part of first uh, derivative of first brinkel arch so it will be the answer uh, it won't be the answer as we have to see the except part of it so the next option is orbicularis oris and you know it is a facial muscle facial expression muscle so it will be uh, included in your second pharyngeal arch so it is supplied by the facial nerve and second pharyngeal arch ka derivative so it won't be answer here again so the next option is posterior cricoarytenoid and as we all very well know it is a uh, muscle safety muscle of the larynx also and we also know that it is the only abductor of the vocal cord and moreover we know it is the only muscle which is supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve and this nerve belongs to the sixth pharyngeal arch so it is also a part of uh, pharyngeal arches so we are left with option number 4 that is the trapezius so remember trapezius and sternocleidomastoid are supplied by the spinal accessory nerve and not are the de derivatives of the pharyngeal arches so here the answer will be uh, except portion has been asked in the question so the answer will be trapezius as it is supplied by uh, gen uh, general somatic efferent and not by special visceral if move to the next question and the next question is injury of seventh nerve causes complete loss of all of the following except and as you all know that seventh nerve is a mixed nerve and we have already discussed about the motor part of the seventh nerve so the sensory part is still left but still uh, we can solve this question very well so let's see the uh, options first the first option is lacrimation so as we all know that we have read that all the uh, facial glands are uh, supplied by the seventh nerve except for the parotid gland so uh, the lacrimal gland is also a facial gland so that will be supplied by the seventh nerve uh, as it is supplied by the seventh nerve loss of the fibers of seventh nerve will lead to loss of lacrimation so now second option is salivation as we know sali major salivary glands are three in number that is submandibular gland three pairs of course that is submandibular gland sublingual gland and the parotid gland and as we said that the exception part was parotid gland that means submandibular and sublingual 
uh, fibers will be lost so their secretions will be lost but the parotid secretion will be spared so it will not be completely lost and in the question there is complete loss of so the salivation portion will be uh, spared because of the parotid spare, uh, sparing now the third option is taste of anterior two third of the tongue i know we haven't discussed about it but still we know that the uh, taste uh, the caudate impani nerve carries the taste sensation from the anterior two third of the tongue and which is a part of your seventh nerve only and posteriorly one third sensation is taken by the grossopharyngeal we will be discussing about in uh, about it in our next video uh, till then let's see the fourth option response and corneal reflex so uh, let's first understand what do you mean by reflex so the reflex has a, a uh, has a receptor then it has a front portion that is a sensory pathway then it has a central synaptic zone then it has uh, the efferent portion and then the uh, the effector portion and then there is a elis uh, eliciting of response so for response to be elicited you need this entire pathway to act so if anything in between doesn't act or um, is injured so you won't get the response the final response so uh, that means seventh nerve is related to the corneal reflex now let's see the corneal reflex in details as you can see in this image that uh, this this portion the front portion is the cornea and there is a sensory stimulation stimulation which we are giving on the cornea and the blue fibers that is the trigeminal ophthalmic division is carrying the fibers from the sensory part of the cornea and carrying it to the spinal trigeminal nucleus located in the pons and the medulla then from there the fibers are from there the fibers are uh, going to the uh, seventh nerve nucleus and then from there uh, the seventh nerve nu uh, seventh nerve fibers are going and supplying the orbicularis oculi muscle and which we know will help in closing our eyes so from this we can know that when uh, we take a cotton swab or, uh, and touch to the cornea what happens the eye uh, both the eyelids closes and we blink so this is the corneal reflex and as you can see there is the fa facial nerve fibers which are involved as an efferent portion so if it is damaged you won't get the response that is the final blinking response will be absent so yes it will be also lost in this question uh, complete there will be a complete loss in the corneal reflex response so the answer here will be salivation i hope it's clear now let's move to the next question and which is which of the following is a relay station of general western fi uh, visceral efferent fibers from the brain stem so as you all very well know as we have already discussed that general visceral efferent are nothing but the ans system ans also parasympathetic and we have discussed in great details about parasympathetic uh, parasympathetic ganglion and also the nuclei associated with it so uh, as the question says we have to find one parasympathetic uh, ganglia here or the nuclei so let's see uh, the dorsal root ganglion and as you uh, as we have already discussed that dorsal word is for the posterior and posterior is your sensory so the uh, ganglion which is associated with the dorsal roots will be sensory in nature and here we are asking in the question efferent fibers ke liye kaun sa ganglion so it won't be a dorsal root ganglion won't be answer here now comes the ciliary ganglion and as we know parasympathetic ganglion were four in number so it was the first one was ciliary ganglion then the second was your submandibular ganglion pterygopalatine ganglion and the aortic ganglion we will be discussing about it when we will be discussing about individual nerves in uh, our next videos but till now we have already discussed about the four names of it so the first one is ciliary ganglion now the next one is your celiac ganglion and the other one is superior cervical ganglion these are the sympathetic ganglion so they won't be receiving any fibers from the brain stem as you know that sympathetic system has a uh, outflow from the thoracolumbar outflow so they won't have any uh, fibers from the brain stem so uh, they won't be the answers here i hope it's clear that the answer will be ciliary ganglion now the next question is all are true about fibers of dorsal nucleus of vagus except so first option is 
uh, and as we all very well know dorsal nucleus of vagus again is a parasympathetic nuclei so we will be discussing about parasympathetic nuclei only so uh, let's see parasympathetic uh, the vagus supplies uh, and as you as we have already discussed again and again that parasympathetic system supplies the glands and also the motor fibers of smooth muscles and the cardiac muscles so let's see uh, the first option is supplies heart lung and gut yes they are the viscera and they have the smooth muscles so they will be supplied by the vagus now the second is relaxes the sphincter and promotes peristalsis suppose we do not know this uh, that e either it relaxes or contracts the sphincters or promotes or doesn't promote the peristalsis let's leave this option then the third option is carries the post ganglionic parasympathetic fibers and uh, for this we have to um, study the concept that is uh, as in the question it is said dorsal nucleus of vagus se jo fibers are rahe hain now uh, you have to understand this uh, in this diagram and this shows the nuclei then the preganglionic fibers then we have a ganglion outside the cns and then we have the post ganglionic fibers and then we have the target organ here so this shows that the nuclei are located in the cns and from the nucleus the fibers which arises are the pre ganglionic fibers not the post ganglionic fibers and here in the question we have asked dorsal nucleus of vagus so the fibers which will be coming from the dorsal nucleus of vagus will be pre ganglionic not post ganglionic even if you don't know the second option you can easily rule out with this concept the third option and that will be your answer here but still let's see the fourth option that is innervates right two third of the transverse column yes the vagus reaches up till the mid gut and the as we all know mid gut is up till your right transverse two third of the colon so yes it supplies up till your mid gut so uh, the answer to this question will be carries post ganglionic parasympathetic fibers it won't be post ganglionic it will be pre ganglionic parasympathetic fibers i hope it's clear now the next question is which cranial nerve nuclei is present in both general somatic efferent and general visceral efferent so for this uh, let's see uh, general somatic efferent means your skeletal muscle portion and general visceral efferent means your ans that is parasympathetic portion let's see which, which uh, of the following cranial nerves has both of uh, these activities with them these actions with them so the ocular motor as we all know it supplies extra ocular muscles so that is general somatic efferent and it also supplies your internal intraocular muscles that is your ciliary muscle and the sphincter pupillae that means uh, which are smooth muscles in nature so that is your general visceral efferent that is parasympathetic so yes ocular motor has both the fibers in it now let's see the other options that is trochlear nerve trochlear is just the motor part that is general somatic efferent supplying your superior oblique muscle which is again an extra extraocular muscle facial nerve facial nerve has the same sensory component also it has the motor component also but the motor part of it is related to the pharyngeal arch as we have discussed the second pharyngeal arch has the facial nerve so the facial nerve supplies second pharyngeal arch so the fibers will be special visceral efferent not general somatic efferent i hope it's clear then the fourth option that is the glossopharyngeal again it is related to a third pharyngeal arch so it will also have the some uh, special visceral efferent not the general somatic efferent i hope it's clear let's move to the next question okay with this we finish up with our questions and uh, i will just like to end this with a quote that is it's not about the gyan which we absorb that is it is not about the knowledge which we are gaining it is that how much knowledge we are applying and that is what will gonna change everything which you are uh, going to achieve in your life so it is also important that whatever you learn you must apply thank you